It's the 90s, you're a business executive, and you need to know what time it is in Tokyo. Because it's the 90s and you're a business executive, you don't know how to use a computer for anything other than playing a game of solitaire. And because you're a business executive, you're not smart enough to look at a globe, count the time zones, and do the math. Luckily, that's why Seiko invented the Executive Desk World Time Clock Calendar. They had a cheaper model of chrome trim, but because it's the 90s and you're a business executive, you get the gold package. Just like your Lexus. There's the model number on the bottom, QHL020B. I wasn't really able to find much information about this, such as when it was introduced and what its list price was. However, I was able to find a copy of the original manual for it which will come in handy when we're setting this thing up. It runs on two AA batteries. They both go in the same direction. There's also a reset button inside the battery compartment, which again makes a loud, annoying beep. I noticed the defaults to the year 1999, so maybe that's when this was made. I don't know. It also defaults to Los Angeles time, but we can change that when we set it up. And the way you set it up is you hold down the DST set button until it beeps. Now you can change your hours. I told you it makes a lot of loud, annoying beeps. Then you press mode and you can change the minutes. And then you can reset the seconds to zero if you want it to be accurate to the second. Now you can change the year. Thankfully if you hold it down it doesn't keep beeping. Then the month. And the day. And finally, you can pick your time zone by just pushing the button for it on the map of the world. There we go. And you press mode one more time, and now everything is set. It shows our date and time, our time zone, which is New York City and Toronto. YTO? I don't know. It also has a calendar with the current day of the week flashing. And now, if you want to know the time anywhere else in the world, you just push the button for it. So, currently in Tokyo, it's 10.14 a.m. the next day. You notice the next day is flashing on the calendar. Some buttons have multiple cities linked to them, so when you push that button, it will cycle through the airport codes for those cities. For example, FRA for Frankfurt, Germany, HAM for Hamburg, Germany, P-A-R for Paris, R-O-M for Rome, that makes sense, and A-M-S for Amsterdam. Well, other buttons seem to be there just to provide something in that time zone to show. Not that it's a major international destination for business, for example, the Solomon Islands. I also noticed that the airport code for Beijing, China is P-E-K, which stands for the old way of spelling the name of the city, which was Peking. And that's not just because this is an old product. They're still using that today, just for the sake of consistency. And eventually, if you leave it set to an international city, or what it says, world time, it'll eventually time out and go back to your home time zone. And if you don't like the way that it alternates between multiple airport codes for some time zones, what you can do is go back into the setup and cycle all the way through to where you pick your time zone. For example here, instead of just pushing it once, you hold it down for two seconds and now it's permanently set to the Toronto airport code and it will not alternate between this and New York City. And every year it seems like everybody complains about having to set their clocks forward an hour in the spring when daylight saving time begins and then set them back an hour in the fall when it ends. 
Well, this one makes it easy because all you have to do is push the DST button. And now we're in daylight saving time and the little sun indicator appears. And then when it ends, you just push it again and we're back to standard time. Easy peasy. And of course this thing has an alarm. You just push the mode button. You get two daily alarms. But because it's the 90s and you're a business executive, you prefer to wake up to the cool sound of smooth jazz. Always a lot of music and never a lot of talk. CD 101.9. You can also set up to five scheduled alarms, which let you pick a specific date for the alarm to go off. That can be used to remind you of things like upcoming appointments. Unfortunately, you can't enter any text to remind you what the alarm is supposed to be for, but I guess it's better than nothing. Then you get a countdown timer. For example, if you have something coming up in an hour and 15 minutes, you can set it to that duration and once it elapses it'll sound off an alarm to remind you. It also has a 24 hour mode. The way you set that is you go back into the settings and when you set the hours you keep going past midnight and now we're in 24 hour mode. As you can see when it gets past 12 o'clock now it says 13 o'clock. Also as the manual says it's good for up to the year 2093. And finally, it has an hourly chime. The way you set that is you go into the alarm mode, and then you press the previous button until the little bell icon appears, which means that the hourly chime is enabled. I enjoy looking back on all the items that have been effectively rendered obsolete by the smartphone. Not completely, you can still buy most of these items brand new today. Certainly some camcorders are still on the market and there's plenty of calculators and portable audio players. I mean they still make cassette players, CD players, radios. You can still buy portable televisions, just not a CRT. And you can still buy landline telephones. And this item you could argue has also been rendered obsolete by the smartphone especially its ability to look up world time zones, but I think its main purpose back in the day was not to be functional, but rather to be decorative. Something to put on your desk at work to look fancy and impressive and to make you look like an important person who has business all around the world. And in that regard, that's something a smartphone just can't replace.